interpret. It's been weird. Okay, so. Bro, you're struggling. <laughs> he left his lab. And I left my lab and my worksheet from yesterday at my he house. Too. Hey, I did too. <laughs> well, he can just go after school. Okay, it's okay they're both. It's so, so let, let's talk about what we can do and can't do in terms of Snedley's debate. Is it neutral? Is it positive? Is it negative? So there's a couple of things that we can do. We can do like a simple test using the balloon, right? So if we assume that the balloon is negatively charged, so one option is we take off, we peel off this tape, we take it, and we bring it close to the balloon, right? Yeah. Now, so we know the balloon is negatively charged, true? Yeah. So this is being attracted to the balloon. Wow. True? Very yes. much so, right? Yes. So what are some possibilities to explain this? The okay, the tape could be neutral or positive. The tape could be neutral yeah. or, positive. or positively charged. Now, if I bring the other side, so no matter which side, sticky tied that, right? It's neutral. So those are my options. Now, the other thing that I can do, since I happen to have this handy dandy contraption, right? Yeah. And so if I bring this, you, you, see, you see that blue? So Not I bring really. this close to the balloon, right? What's it saying? That's showing a very negative charge. Okay. Now, if I take it and bring that to the tape, zero. Look what happens. Positive. Okay. <laughs> tape is positively charged, right? Yeah. So yeah. this. Okay. Now, you'll notice it doesn't make any difference which side of the tape. <laughs> I move that towards. Okay, so I know this is this is quantitatively negatively charged. And you're right. If all I had, and this is something the VTOR hit on, this is something that's important that you understand. And when I bring this close to it and it attracts, there are two viable options for that explanation. It could be neutral and it's just attracted to it. Or it could be, positive. so what that sensor does is that it's Eagles, Damn, we are cool. about to do a safe defend drill. We can remind you we're practicing the highest... You should just keep lecturing. Like, uh, what are they going to do? Fire me. Pop a balloon, Mr. Burkamp. And fill out the more... That's so funny. What if he did that one? We're going to start the drill shortly. Okay, so I actually have to lock my door. Ooh. Unfortunately. Can we start playing pumped up kicks? Oh my god. Dude. Thanks. I didn't know they repel each other. They repel each other. That's the only one I've heard of this. God, I'm the type of guys that were you. Uh, Banging on the door. I'm running. I don't know where we can escape in this room. You have to ask for like a little bit of 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 a I know the proper acceleration. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. Not lock his <laughs> oh, imagine, oh, imagine Burkhead oh, yeah. gets to take the magnet off. It's going to slide off. <laughs> Shake the door handle. I don't trust that much for Burkhead to take the chair off. Are you still recording for all Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they want you to know. <laughs> What's up, guys? How's it going? I can't believe Oh, Tyler got it. I should just post a video. Tyler got it. I saw him. I'm about to bring up a so, phone. Hey, does it, don't yeah. you have a knife? He has a knife, I know that. I can't believe that I just hit the hardest trick shot ever. That was actually so tough. Oh my gosh, guys, did you see that? 
pistol. You need like a hurricane. You need like a. That was so much harder than it looked. What are they talking about? Oh, it's like a hurricane. 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 Oh, it's <laughs> Sam, you're gonna get this car. Oh no. Is it it? Yeah, there's it. There's it. I appreciate it. I'm just in here watching Tyler die. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it. I really need to just play over. Oh my god. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. If I hit this, I'll just. I'll just swing by Morella's house too. Morella's <laughs> <laughs> old house. I'll swing by her old house. Uh, oh Jesus! Oh, oh you do like the flashlight strobe light. Like. Wait, who? I thought that was barrel team. I think that was under barrel. Yeah, I thought it was something under barrel. Oh, there's a rainbow six. Rainbow six. I don't have flashlights. I think it was under barrel. For the office, you have flashlights. Mr. Burkhead, you got snacks in there? <laughs> no, surprisingly. Like oh, it God. works! Yeah! Stay out! Go away! She said lock me. The door it is locked. <laughs> Try and get in! <laughs> <laughs> you never took him. But the funny head. thing was, the chair almost fell out. I know, that's the double chair. Yeah, they try that away once. Dang it, guys. They got it. <laughs> like, yeah, they oh, the lights are off. Oh, no. The back lights on. Are you in session? I think there was no. No, they told me to keep it recording. Well, it depends on where the threat was. I thought there were any doors. There aren't any doors on this side. No, no, I think it's, no. <laughs> it's like, unless we cut through Miss Utt's room, but that's no, the only way out. No. Yeah. Unless yeah, we, we, have go to, we have to go through all the side bunkers. We have the test yeah, it's, it's, man. There's bunker. With what weapons? Ping pong accelerator. Lasers. Yeah. We can blind them with our lasers. Yeah. Well, yeah, if there's a room that you want to be in, okay, look at this. We have a bed of nails. We have concentrated hydrochloric acid. We got a bed of ping pong That is true. We do have a lot of water. We have a lot of cannon is all we need. If we have to fight, I like our odds. We got a liquid nitrogen. Who's getting that? We get smoky out. As we all clear, thank you for your participation. Uh, staff members, you can still check the box and you can check the box if you use your fingerprint on the device that opens the box uh, until 1.30. So please get those boxes checked and complete that form by 1.30. Thank you. It's always funny if he's going to put the chair there and someone's just like, looks well, like he just opened it. <laughs> Okay, so back to our story. So, are you still filming? Yeah, they wanted him to know about the drill. Safe to drill. 
Okay. Anyway, back to the story. So, here's what, let me, let me, here one out. Now, here's the other thing. So, some of you said, well, that could be neutral. It's valid. But if that was, if those were neutral, and I brought two of them together, what would happen? If they're neutral, if, if they were neutral, nothing would happen. Nothing would happen. But since I bring them close together... Pardon the interruption one last time. Teachers, if you are checking your box with your fingerprint, you will hear the box sound an alarm just in your room. And that's okay. It's not doing anything wrong. We have until 1.30 to check those boxes and get that Google form completed. Thank you so much. Have a great day, Eagles. Okay. <laughs> so when I bring them together and they actually repel, then this is like a logic problem. Yes, if I bring this close to that negatively charged balloon, it could be neutral or it could be positive. But if I take that tape off and they were both neutral, then when I bring these two pieces of tape together, they should not do anything. But since they repelled, therefore, this is like a logic, and then go, oh, therefore, they have to be positively charged. So, when you do the one where you put the one down and put the other one over the top of it. Or the whole, is the whole thing, the whole piece of tape. Yes. So then I'm going to take that off. Why is it positive? Do they make it like that on purpose? No, it's just, that's the, it's just the way it, now, when I take that off, okay, that's clearly positively charged. But now, so this is the one where I overlaid this one, and this is the one that was on the, on the table. So now, when I bring it towards this negatively charged balloon, it is clearly repelling, whereas this one is attracting to it. So if you want to settle that debate, or can one of you come up here and grab that box? Because I got my fingers like. Hustle plays. Just take, take that and point it towards this table. Okay? So that's going negative, and then bring it towards this one, and that's going positive. Okay? So the shorter one is positively charged. I bring it towards that balloon, boom, it's a trap. This is negatively charged. I bring it towards here, that's going to repel. Thank you. Got him? Okay. Fantastic. Wait, so are t is tape like, um, oh, I guess it's charged always. Yes. But it loses that charge after a while. Now, if I put them both down on the table and then peel them off, then they're going to repel each other because now they have the same charge. So the only time they become opposite the charge is when you over was when you put one on top of the other. That's when you get like an imbalanced transfer of those electrons. Okay. Is it transferring from the table to the Yeah, so basically it's kinda of like the sticky side is like it pulls those electrons from the table. Okay. All right. I was counting on losing ten minutes to that trip. So, you don't do jewelry for you? <laughs> All right, Kanye. Kanye? I don't know. Kind of like Kanye. It's not bad. No, Whoa. his music's terrible. What? What? Whoa. Whoa. What do you think about him as a person? Terrible. Well, he's politically incorrect on everything he says. So did 
you, you, you want like the acronym? Or? Yeah, say it, Sam. Just spell it out for you. Who was it, Paris, Sam? Who was it? Yeah. Do you remember this? Is that word? I've been Okay. So this is how these charge problems can play out. So imagine that you have three different objects. A, B, and C. All right? Completely separated. So, but you're given like this initial set of conditions. So A is completely neutral. Has no charge. B has been charged with a charge of one half Q. It doesn't make any difference what the Q is. It's just going to be one half of a charge. C is negatively charged. Okay. Now again, if you're actually wanting to charge a conducting sphere, you have to have like a charged object, like a conduct, like this balloon. I'd rub it on the balloon. I'd take it and I'd touch it. Boom! This one transfer those electrons. If this was positively charged, I would touch it to the balloon. The electrons would migrate from back to here. So the electrons can go both ways. If you have excess electrons, you dump the electrons off. If it's positively charged, the electrons will flow over to try and equalize everything out. Now, here's going to be the difference also. Whether it touches or whether it's brought near. So if I've got these two spheres, let's say, and they're just near each other like this. Not touching. They're not touching. If I take this balloon and put the negatively charged balloon here, what's going to happen to this side of this sphere? It's going to be positively charged. So then the electrons are going to migrate over here and that's going to make this side. Then the next one down is going to cascade. This one is going to become Possibly charged, it's because it's going to migrate those electrons over there. But as soon as I take it away, everything's going to come mm -hmm. back to normal. Now, if they're touching, if they're touching, and I take this balloon, yeah. and I bring it close to it, I don't actually touch it. Yeah. This is negatively charged. I bring this close. I don't touch it. I bring this close. Then I separate them and then take away the balloon. Now what's going to happen to the charge on these? One of them is going to be a charge. The or they're both charged. Positive. This one's going to be? Positive. Why? Negative. Because it migrates all the balloon was negative. Like, they moved over there. Yeah. And this one is going to be? Positive. positive. They should have the same charge. So this <laughs> is a way that I can get spheres that are equally and oppositely charged. I got them like this. I bring this close. Now, what if I actually touch the balloon to it? Be then they're both going to be negatively charged. Yeah. Okay? Agreed. Connor, um, give me another one of those. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why would they both become negatively? Because it's going to... Just one. Just one? Yep. Oh, he's going to use I don't it. Want you to have nope. two. Nope. All right. Okay. 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 Well, I have a question about like how fast do the charges move to each other? Is it like speed of the light. speed of light? Or? The electric field moves at the speed of light. Okay. The electrons have what they call drift velocity, mm -hmm. which is changes depending upon the type of material. Okay. Okay. All right. So, imagine this. Here's my initial. Whoa. <laughs> Disaster more like... No. You cut, cut me off. Have you ever had a warhead? Uh, had a what? Are, are this what they call the sour candies? No. Yeah. You've never you haven't? Yeah. Yeah. Someone should bring him one. You're missing okay. out. Okay. That's okay. I got you. At, at my age, there's a lot of things I've missed out on. I'm okay with that. Okay. <laughs> so, now, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to take A, and I'm going to touch it to B. Mm -hmm. Wait, can I have a question. What? Before we start. What does that all say? Huh? What does it say? A has no charge, it's neutral. Okay. B is charged at a positive one half charge. Positive? Why does it look like a negative? It's a pop. That's a plus. Oh. Plus okay. plus Q over two? Yes. Okay. And C is negatively charged at Q. 
Okay. Okay. Cool with this. All right. Now, what about the, the I'm going to touch okay. A to B. C has C is not part of the story. This is A touches B. C is not part of the story. So if I touch A to B, what's going to happen? Wait, which one's A? Sorry. Oh, they just oh, They're going to distribute. So each one's going to have oh, four. Q, one four. Four. Q over four, right? Yeah. So I have Q over four. Mm -hmm. This one's going to be Q over four, and that's going to be Q. Now, here's the other thing that you can do on a problem like this. What do you know about the sum of the entire charge at any point? Always equal always zero. Should all charge has to be conserved. Mm. Okay? For those of you that were just in my AP chemistry class, you heard that in terms of redox reactions. Here you're hearing it in terms of charge. It's the same law. Because what's the overall sum of the charges? Negative Q over 2, right? Because if I take Q over 2 plus negative Q, I'm going to get negative Q over 2. So at this point, does everything still add up to? Yeah, it's still the exact same charge. Now at this point, I'm going to touch B to C. So the first sequence, I touched A to B, did that, distributed that positive charge. Now I'm going to take this positive charge and touch it to this negative charge. So what's going to happen to the charge on A? Two over four. It's going to be zero. Yeah, zero. If you touch B to C, it's going to be zero. Oh, wait. Is this all happening after one and a half? A doesn't change. A doesn't change. So here's the sequence. I touched A to B. Okay. Then I'm going to separate them. Then I'm going to take C and touch it to one half. I thought you meant it's after seven you already touched B to A. No, 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 no. So, no, no. So, I touched A to B. That part of the story is done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Now, I'm going to take B and touch it to C. Yes. Okay. Is it really So, we're moving on. No, wait, I, so, right. what's going to happen? So, A is its own story at this point. What's the charge on A is still going to be? Q over four. Still Q over four. What? So, we are doing it after. That's why I said yes. I said Q over four. I thought you said zero. No, I said Q over four originally, and then I'll, everybody no. else said zero, and I was no, like, oh, it's we're Q going over four. Because we're doing this in sequence. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. Now, now so I'm gonna now I've got this action going on. Oh, that's a negative three halves. I've ever seen one. Negative three oh halves. Oh my gosh, though, but negative three halves. Yeah. yeah. C goes to zero and then positive. <laughs> You're, the negative three halves. You're solid on that. No. <laughs> no, it's it's negative, negative three fourths. Three quarters. Negative three quarters. Wait, no, it's not. Yeah. One it's, fourth. It's, it's one negative five three quarters. Three plus. Three plus. Three plus three plus three what did you say? I mean, not five quarters. Oh, it's five negative eight. three quarters five divided eight. by five two. Eight. Yeah, five so eight. I've heard five eights, I've had three quarters, I've heard zero. It's one fourth, one fourth minus one is negative three fourths. Three eighths. And three then eighths. divided by two. Yeah, so three eighths. I couldn't, then, do, I couldn't multiply by two in my head for some reason. It's three eighths. Positive, positive or negative, negative three eighths? Negative. 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 negative three eighths. Uh, I was like, dude, that's so easy. Three. So oh. easy. Oh, you say that now. So easy. What do you mean? Just add them together. Do we have to write two? One second. I'm saying, thank you. Because it's a five, it's a fraction of that chart. You might now. Okay? Go with this. Now, how can you tell that this is right? Because you add them up and they'll If you add them all up together, they should add up to a negative one half. So that's how you can tell that that's right at any point. See if they add up. Now, let's spend some time talking about this equation. This is force, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, your book actually gives this constant as 8.99. Everybody just uses Why it chose that, I don't know. Everybody just, every other problem I've ever seen, your AP exam, everybody else uses this 9.00 times 10 to the 9th. Okay? Not to the negative 9th like I screwed up and wrote that the other day. Okay? That's very much to the 9th. And the units of Newton's meter squared or Coulomb squared. So again, here's the deal. Unlike a gravitational force, the only requirement to have a gravitational force is that you have to have mass. 
So remember on your gravitational force, that's big G, M1, M2 over D squared, or R squared, depending on what you want to do. Now, what's the value of big G? Is that the 6.67 times 10 to the... 23rd? That's, that's off of Godwin's number. Negative 27. Negative 11. Negative 11. That's what I meant. Oh, Newton's wow. meter squared over kilogram squared. All right? Okay? Yeah. So the only requirement to have a gravitational field is that you have to have mass. So here's what I want you to see, is that if I've got these two spheres right here, regardless if they're charged or not, they're always going to have a gravitational force that's going to pull them together. Okay? But what's the only way they're going to have an attractive or repulsive if they force? Charge. If they're charged. Is if they're charged. Now, here's a, this is going to be one of the problems that you're going to have to do on, on your homework. What well, homework? I don't want to be good. Oh, tonight. No, the homework is tomorrow, to right? If we met, like, yeah. are kids going to give homework? No. What? Sit, stop. Okay. Wait, you said they only... They mm -hmm. Hold on. Special day today. Yeah. Does that mean Earth, Earth, Earth is charged? You said they have no. Oh. Or that one. Overall, it's neutral. Okay, so imagine this. I have these two spheres. <laughs> Is there a gravitational force between them? Yes. Why? Because of mass. Of mass. If we know the mass, we know the distance. That looks really creepy when I put my hands on that. <laughs> no, it really does. Why don't I take a picture of that? That's totally weird. Okay. Post it, like, post it on Twitter. This is like two convex mirrors. Hashtag. Hashtag twinsies. Okay. So, there's going to be a small amount of gravitational force between them. Now, what if both spheres were negatively charged? Could you calculate a net force? A net yeah. force? If they're both yes. negatively charged? If, if they're both negatively charged. I think you could, yeah. What would that look like? You plug in the negatives into the equation. Okay. So if you had you have a gravitational force that's trying to pull them apart, right? Am I right or am I right? If they're both negatively charged, what would happen? The negatives cancel. Wait. They would try and push each other away, right? Yeah. So your net force would be the difference between the attractive force of gravity and the repulsive force of the electrostatic force. Right? Wait, so will it be a positive electrostatic force then? So it just depends on how you want to define it. Okay. So if you define the gravitational force as being positive, okay, like this, so when we pull this together, true? If you define that attractive force as being as just because of gravity, if you want to make that positive, then the electrostatic force, because they're both negative, would just be pushing in the opposite direction. So you would just have to define one as being positive and one as being negative. Okay. Okay. Now, what if one's positively charged and one's negatively charged? They'll attract. Then the net force, you would add them together. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your gravity is only going to pull these things together. Your electrostatic force could either push them apart or hold them together. Now, let's say we're in deep, 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 deep space. Okay, deep space. <laughs> Two objects have mass, and let's say that they are oppositely charged. Okay? What's going to happen over the period of time? We're in deep attract. space. They're going to attract, attract, right? Because there's no gravity. There's no gravity, so they're going to begin to move forward. She said, because of two things. You have the electrostatic force, which is Positive. pulling them together, right? Pulling them together. And then you also have an electrostatic force which is pulling them together. Over the period of time, what's going to happen to the strength of the gravitational force? It's going to, it's going to increase. Why? Because they're getting, it's getting closer. Getting closer. What's going to happen to the electrostatic force? It'll also increase. It's also going to increase. So what's going to happen to the value of the acceleration Whoa, as those get closer? Bigger. It's going to get bigger. Okay? Because as a function of distance, both of those are going to get closer. The force is going to get stronger, so therefore it becomes like the snowball. So the force is going to get stronger, the acceleration is going to get strong, bigger, so they're going to move together faster, which is going to make the force even get bigger, which is going to make the acceleration even get bigger, right? It's going to change different. What if they were, if, 
What'd you say? I said they're going to be different in a positive way. <laughs> different. Okay. Now, what if they were oppositely charged? See me. What if they were? What if they had the same charge? They would go they further. Would further they would go further away. But then, what would happen to the acceleration? Yeah. Still increase. Right. Different in a negative. Wait, way. no. No. Nope. Never mind. If they were the same charge, leave gravity out of it. If, they, if these were the same charge and I let go of them, what would they do? They would they would repel, away. right? Okay. So as they repelled and moved further away, what would happen to that repulsive force? It would become smaller, so what would happen to the acceleration? Eventually, they would go far enough away that they would just maintain a certain constant velocity. Okay, because if there's if there's no opposing forces, if you're in deep, 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 deep space, eventually they wouldn't accelerate, and they would just move off to constant velocity. Okay. So let's say, let's say that I've got Q1 here, and that is a weird thing that just happened. What? Can we see the center of the universe? Of our universe? Yeah. Uh, He's right here. Oh, no, no, no. Do we no, know what it is? Like the same. <laughs> there, there really <laughs> isn't <laughs> like a true center. Because like, yeah, yeah, space and time, time are continuously expanding out. <laughs> so can we track it back to where it's expanding out from? You could, but here's the problem. Is that, imagine that I've got a smaller balloon. Yeah. And I put dots on that balloon. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And then I blow up the balloon. Okay. So the problem is, is that all of those dots are going to be moving away from each other. So everything is moving away from each other. As well as. And then the problem is, it's accelerating. So the rate at which the universe is expanding is getting faster. And it's an annoying thing because we really don't know why. Not to mention the fact that we can't account for about 80% of the mass of the universe right now because it's dark energy and dark matter, which has kind of been embarrassing. It's like we're missing literally like a huge chunk of the universe. We don't know where it is. Do we you like, believe in multiverses? Have no idea. That gets like, weird. Do we have a slight clue? About what? Like the rest of the mass. Like no, we, we just know what it is. We just don't no. know what it looks like. How do we know that because we're missing we're like, that much? You're white and because if you look at, like, let me get like through this. Like, I'll get back to that. Like, okay, that's a whole other discussion. Yes. All right. So let's say that you've got two charges, Q1 and Q2. Each of them have a charge of 10 nanocoulombs. Okay. And we want to calculate the force between these two. Pardon me, our no. interruption. At this time, all safety pin boxes should be closed. It is now 1.30. All safety pin boxes should be closed. Okay. So I've got two charged particles, Q1, Q2, separated by two centimeters, not by very much. Each has a positive charge of 10 nanocoulombs. And they're both positively charged. So what do they want to do? Come together and fly apart. Fly apart. They want to fly apart. Okay? So at this point, I have the capacity to calculate the force. So my force is going to be K, which is 9 times 10 to the 9th, Newtons, meter squared over Coulomb squared. Now, because this is coulombs, I can't leave that in nanocoulombs. So one of the conversions that you have to be able to do is that conversion with nanocoulombs. So nano means what? 10 to the negative ninth. So this is going to be 10 to the negative ninth. 10 to the negative ninth. Now, I've got a distance of 2 centimeters, which has to be changed into meters, meters which is going to be how many? 0 0.020 meters, and that's going to get squared. squared. Now, this is where the math kind of works out nicely, because this is 10 to the 9th, and this is the advantage of nanocoulombs. So that 10 to the 9th effectively cancels out that 10 to the negative 9th. Wait, why'd you do it twice? Because there's two Because they both have a charge of 10 nanocoulombs. Oh, so Wait, you have to do, how do we, oh. do, do you have to give us that nanocoulomb? Yeah, I've, I've got to give you that data. Okay, cool. If not, that would be like asking me, it's like, hey, what, what, is, what is 
what do you weigh? What's your attraction towards the earth? Mm -hmm. And I don't give you the mass. So I've got to give you the charges. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Okay? So this is why you want to store this in your calculator, because this is a number you're going to use a lot. Okay? So somebody run these numbers. So basically, you're going to have 9 times 10 to the negative 9 divided by 0.02 squared. What do you get? Uh, What'd you get? 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6. 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6. Yeah, okay? It's cool. Now, so is that's going to try and drive these apart. Now, let's, let's change it up a little bit. I'm going to go back to that same 10 nanocoulomb charge. That same 10 nanocoulomb charge. But then I'm going to put a 1 nanocoulomb charge in between the two of them. So imagine this. There's three charged particles now. A 10 nanocoulomb, which is one centimeter away from that. A 10 nanocoulomb, and then I have a 1 nanocoulomb charge in the middle. And I'm going to calculate the net force acting on that 1 nanocoulomb charge. Zero. Why? Because they're both. Because it's opposing the same direction. But could you calculate, here's my point, could you calculate the force on each one? Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's get that number. Well, wouldn't they, they're both equations. Hold on. So you have 9 times 10 to the 9th, right? And so what I want to do is I want to calculate the force from this one. So that's going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 9th times 10 times 10 to the, ne to the negative 9th divided by 0 0.01 meters squared. And if you do this, let me know what you get. So you get 9 times 10 to the 9th, 1 times 10 to the negative 9th, 10 times 10 to the negative 9th. Because one of those, that, one, that middle one is 1 nanocoulomb. So you're going to get 9 something. 9 times 10 to the negative 8. Newtons. Okay? So, will that center particle feel the same amount of chart force on both sides? Yes. yes. So it's going to feel a 9 times 10 to the negative fourth force going in each direction. So the net force in the middle of that is going to be zero. zero. Now let's play the what if game. What if I switch out that positive charge and I make that negative charge in the middle? Now what's going to happen? Same, but it's, it's, it's going to be the exact same value of the force, but... It's going to be attracting, so... But it's going to be like a tug of war, right? Yeah. So now instead of being squished, it's going to get pulled. Third option. I go back to making this a positive value, but then, living on the edge... Erase it. There we go. Now I'm going to make that a negative value. Now what's going to happen? It's going to go towards this side. Why? Because that one's pushing that way, and well, the positive is pushing the positive to the right, and the negative is pulling it to the right. So what would be the net force if you have a negative and a positive and a positive? It would be double. Yeah, you would take this and you would double it because then it's going to because it's going to be get pushed to the right because that's a positive right, and then it's going to get pulled. So the net force then would be twice that. Yes. Is this like just something you you have to like know? You know what I mean? Yes. What do you mean? Like the way that the the direction that the force will go. 
Yeah, or like because like because the signs won't have like you, they, no, no, they won't no, give you signs of the, the math. The, what you want to do? What I always do when you do this, just no I signs. just get the number. I don't even worry about the positive and negative signs. Okay. I just get the number and then decide. Wow, what's going to happen relative to the other forces? Now, what if we did this? What if we take that one nanocoulomb charge? We put it up there. We have a 10 nanocoulomb charge. A 10 nanocoulomb charge. Do you get done? Yeah. Okay, just put that up there. You have any questions? Okay, all right. Yeah, just leave all that. See there. And let's say that this is separated by one centimeter. This is separated by one centimeter. Okay? So we know that the numeric value of that force is 9 times 10 to the negative 9. So let's say that both of these are positively charged. What would that look like on that charge that's up there towards the top? What's it going to feel? It's going to feel a pull just downward. This is positively charged. Oh, it's going to pull oh, it is. up. It's Everything push is positively it's charged. Pull it's going to pull straight up. Why? Push up? Because when... They like it's like the force vectors, isn't it? Oh. Or, like you have to do this and then this and then straight. Up. Oh yeah. No. Oh, look at the video. So, do you agree? Yummy physics action. <laughs> that just sounded odd. <laughs> you know, I've been teaching in this room for a long time, longer than y'all been on this earth. Never heard that expression in my entire life. How long have you been teaching in this room, Blake? Let, 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 let that be noted today. February 15th, 142, Dear Diary. Today, a student said, yummy physics action. Okay, Louie said, Louie said, yummy physics action. I'll take 30. Okay, now, I've got this force going this way, right? Through? Yeah. Go back old school tip to tail method. If I took this vector and draw it from the end, drew it from the end of that one, right? What would the net effect be? Straight up. Straight up. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So, what do you know about now? Let's go real old school. Uh oh. Velocity. What do you know about the x and y components of those? I bet they're equal or something. What about your X components? What are they going to do? Opposite. They're going to cancel each other out, right? So the X components will cancel each other out. What about the Y components? Yeah, so what you, to get the value of that, you'd have to find the Y component. So you'd have to have this angle. You'd have to find the Y component and then double that. What if, what if, that was... A negative value. Why? Because like same thing with the ve vectors, but it's that way now. So is this this would be like the reverse. Yeah. Right? Because if that was a negative charge, it would be pulled in this direction, it would be pulled in that direction. So the net effect would be straight down. In both situations, your x components yeah. would cancel each other out. Um Wait, so I think we're okay. If that was the case, why don't would the would the electron if it was going down just oscillate or would it like No, so typically how these problems play out, like they're anchored. So in other words, like imagine this. So are the two protons on the bottom? No, no, the, no, not, protons. not protons. They're Sorry. Just, just part <laughs> two particles on the two bottom, are they not feel, hey. like oh. going to make it move like out way? Out so way. here's how this would play out. Okay. What you would say, how this would work, is that you would say you're going to have two particles that are like negatively charged, okay? And they're anchored. And then you're going to let go of them. And then you're going to see what happens. Okay, so they would, that's how this would play out. You have to start off where they're anchored like this. They're a certain distance away from each other. You let go, 
and then you look at what happens immediately as you let go. Okay? Because the problem is, once it begins to move, then you're changing these distances. And then you're changing the value of the force, so then it becomes a huge dynamic problem. Okay. I'm actually done. What? Hypothetically, if it was to oscillate, would it go forever or would it stop like a spring? Well, if you're if you're in deep, 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 deep space, then it would theoretically oscillate forever. But the problem is when you have large particles, you also get an interaction with magnetic field, and the twisting of those magnetic field lines is going to make it slow down. But it will be in equilibrium. Hey, I already did. Mr. Burkett, when did you get all fancy with these sheets? I okay. copied it. Uh, so, let me explain what's on this sheet. So, from the book, you have questions 9, 10, and 12. You have problems 8 through 10, 12 through 17. Then, you have this problem as an additional one to work. So, let me stage this one. Two small plastic beads, imagine that they're really, really small balloons. They each have a mass of 2 grams. They each have a charge of a negative 50 nanocoulomb, so they've both been charged. They are placed two centimeters apart, just like kind of the balloons, what I just did. I've got the balloons, I'm going to hold them in place. So the first thing you want to do is, what's the magnitude of the electric force between the spheres? F equals kq1, q2 over d squared. By what factor is the electric force in the beads greater than the gravitational force on the beads? So in that situation, you're going to have to go old school F equals big G, M1, M2 over D squared. So you're going to have to find the gravitational force as a separate value and then divide that. Okay? So that answer to B should be a big number. You want to take the bigger force and divide it by the smaller force. Okay? So because that's what I'm asking about. What is that greater than? So that answer to B should be a big number. Okay? Then, on C, I've got the series release. What's the acceleration of each sphere? Now, here's the deal. That's complicated because of the fact that, notice they're both negatively charged. So you have negative charge, which is trying to repel them, but you have a gravitational force, which is trying to pull them together. So what are you going to have to calculate? Net force. Net force, Net force equals? equals MA. MA. So then you've got to go old school. Whoa. Whoa. Don't we use the total? No, because no, you're just calculating the, the, the acceleration of each one. Of each one? Yeah. So they have the same acceleration? Yeah, they're going to have the same acceleration. So I can just use the individual mass? Yes. Okay. Yeah. On, on that acceleration question. On that one. Then, that last question, what's going to happen to the magnitude of the acceleration as the beads get further apart? Okay? And I say explain. Just don't tell me, Sam, so help me. So help what, what will I not tell you? On D, if you just write the acceleration changes, so help me. But it does. Oh my God. <laughs> what if we hit changes in time? Yeah, what if we hit a little, no. a little it changes no. positively? I feel like these are when positive. you get to, let me give you some hints. When you get to that first question, number nine, it is a step-by-step -step procedure. Okay. Huh? <laughs> Did you ask if you had to use a separate piece of paper? So help me God, Louie. Do it. I dare you. I dare you. Working on that piece of paper. I dare you. No. Because I'm not going to grade it. It's on the back. Okay. So, no. So, on question number nine, you need to basically write that out as a procedure. Go, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Okay? And it's important that you have the sequence. Some of them you're going to bring close, some of them you're actually going to touch. When you get to uh, question number 10, okay, which is fairly complicated, you're going to have to go old school on some stuff with that. Uh, on 10, if that acceleration goes well, that acceleration should be around 7 meters per second squared. On which one? 
10. Problem 10. 10. Question. Problem 10. Oh. Problem 10. A problem 10. Problem 10, part B. That acceleration should be 7 ish. Okay? Uh, when you get to question 12, let me explain what's happening on question 12. There's question 12. Problem 12. I'm sorry, problem 12. Now you got me confused. On um, problem number 12, let me get you started on this. Okay? First off, you're going to start, you're going to talk about forces. So you can have K, Q, A, there's two spheres, A and B, divided by distance squared. Now, here's the problem, is that you're told that you have 25 nanocoulombs of charge that's available, okay? And they give you the force and... Uh, what you have to figure out is what's the charge on each one. So the problem is, is that you don't know that the charges are evenly distributed. So in other words, you can't go, oh, they're both 12 and a half, okay? So what you want to do on this one, let, because you know the charge on A, this will make sense when you read the problem, plus the charge of B has to add up to 25 nanocoulombs. So that's one equation. That's the second equation. So what can you do there? Substitution. Substitution. So you can say, oh, Q of A is going to equal 25 nanocoulombs minus Q of B. So, but unfortunately then you have D squared and you got to distribute that and so you have to work 12 as a quadratic. Okay? Now, here's how you can, how, here's how, how can you tell that your answer is 12 is right? Because you're going to chart and find the charge on each one. It's not an answer. going to be up. No, 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 no. They add up to 25. They add up to 25. Oh, yes. So on number 12, okay, your answers have to add up to 25. Because that's the total charge that's available. Okay? And let me give you a hint. It's not like 12 and 13. Just tell me. Um... On number six, problem 16, okay, problem 16, you want to give two answers. You want to give the numeric value of the force and which direction that force is going to act, like positive Y, negative Y, positive X, negative X, something like that, okay? Your forces on number 16 should be something times 10 to the negative third, okay? When you get to question 17, you have a proton and an electron. You want to calculate the acceleration of each one, which is not going to be the same because they have completely different masses. And the mass of an electron and a proton are on the back side of that yellow sheet, okay? If you need that, that's where you can find that information. So on 17, you need to give two different values. 17A is for the proton. You need to give the value of the acceleration and the direction that the proton is moving. And then on 17B, you need to give the, the value of the acceleration of the electron and the direction it is moving. Okay? So you need two things with those answers. The value of the acceleration and which direction is it moving. It'll make sense when you get there. It's either moving away or it's moving towards. Okay? All right. You're on your own. Be free.